Hi kids! April 22nd is Earth Day. That's an international holiday where we think about our planet, how we can preserve the resources on the planet and take care of it. So our art projects this week are going to be focused on Earth Day. These are the supplies you're going to need today. You're going to need a coffee filter. You're going to need um, these colors. You're going to need a blue, a green, a black, water-soluble marker. You're also going to need a Sharpie marker, which is a permanent marker. You need a white crayon, and you'll need a paintbrush and a little bit of water. You'll also need two pieces of paper today, because we're going to make two projects out of our artwork. So you want to make sure that your paper is larger than the coffee filter is, so you have a little space around it like that, or bigger, okay? So go ahead and collect your art supplies and meet me back here in a minute. All right, let's get started. Now, if you um, don't have a coffee filter at home and can't get a hold of a coffee filter, um, you will make one project with your, um, your earth. That's okay. You could use something like a lid or a plate and just trace it into the center of your paper. So that's a workaround if you don't have a coffee filter. So on your first piece of paper, we're gonna be doing some coloring. So we're gonna place our filter in the middle and try to keep it there because we're gonna use um, the how it bleeds through to help us find where the planet goes again later. So I'm gonna just sort of find the edges and make sure they're about the same on each side. And then I'm gonna color a picture of the Earth. I'm thinking about what the Earth looks like. And from space, it looks blue and green. So I'm just gonna use my blue and green. And we know that there are continents. Those are the big land masses that are on our planet. And so you can look at a picture of the Earth if you like um, and work from that, or you can just kind of make it up. So you're gonna color with your, uh, your marker and create the blue and the green masses. The land masses are green and the blue will be the water. So you can see how it's bleeding through and I'm holding it down with my other hand. If you scooch it around accidentally or it doesn't quite um, print 100%, it's okay. It's just a way to sort of see where the edges of the coffee filter are. See how that's working out? And that's going to help us with our next step. I'm using the side of my marker because it's wider and I can get um, do more coloring. It doesn't need to be perfect. We're just trying to make the impression of the land masses. Go up here. It can be a little tricky to hold your coffee filter down and do all those things, but do your best. And I'm leaving big spaces for the water because there's a lot of water on planet Earth. More water than land. And I want to credit um, an art teacher named Nick Khan for this lesson. I learned about this earth lesson from her website. And she goes by the name Minnie Matisse. So thanks, Minnie Matisse, for this awesome idea today. All right, so that is my green, and now I'm going to do my blue. Let's see. See how it's leaving a print? Printing is one of the words that we're going to be hearing a lot today. And a print is when you have um, something that you can make multiples of by pressing it in stamp, like ink, like a rubber stamp makes prints. We're gonna use um, our fingers to make fingerprints. So basically it's when you transfer color from one place to another and you can do it multiple times. Even if you don't fill it in completely, it's okay. So you can leave little lighter areas or little white spots if you want to. 
because when we add the water, it will all work out. If your marker feels like it's getting a little dried out, just go a little slower or turn it. And if you get marker on your fingers, that's good because you're going to need that later. We're going to use our fingers today to make our artwork. It's really flimsy. You can see how it kind of sticks to me. So if it sticks to you, just reposition it and hold it down with your non-coloring hand. Might go get all bunched up. That's all right. Just spread it back out again and keep going. It's important to get those edges. That really helps to figure out where your planet's going to be next. So let's see how it printed. Well, yeah, it's like a little ghost print, right? That sort of leftover print. So I'm going to actually set this paper aside now. And I'm going to go and get my next piece of paper. Switcheroo. And now we're going to put the planet on our new piece of paper. And this is what, this is the fun part, I think. This is the fun part. We're going to dip our brush into the water. We don't need a lot of water. Coffee filters are made to soak up water, so you can wipe the water off your brush until you just have a little bit. And you're gonna hold it down, and you're just gonna get your coffee filter wet. Just dip your brush into the water just with the tippy toe. You don't wanna soak it. It's nice to be able to kinda control it a little bit. And you're just going to take it right up to the edge and you're kind of making your coffee filter stick to the next piece of paper. We're going to get that all kind of stuck down with uh, our water. I'm trying to stay on the edges and stop my water painting right at the edge of that coffee filter. And you see how those little white spots are just filling in? Pretty cool, right? Wanna make sure you get everything. I really like the way this is bleeding and blending with the blue as I go around and color the green areas. It's making these really cool little patterns that I think are gonna look nice. Make sure I got everything. Sometimes it's hard to tell. I guess it doesn't hurt to kind of go back. And you can smush your um, coffee filter down. It's okay if it has those wrinkles. So if you get really like bubbles or wrinkles, take a minute to smush them down because it could prevent the marker from getting onto your paper and making that print. So we want to press that filter down onto the paper underneath and get those wrinkles and bubbles sort of pushed out the sides. You can kind of guide them out to the edges of your filter to get those out of there. Cool. That looks amazing. So I'm going to set this aside to dry and I'm going to go back to this piece of paper. Okay, so remember we have that that ghost print here. All right, and we're going to use it as our guidelines. And now we're going to do some fingerprints. You can see my fingers already 
um, dark because I've already used this. Uh, and we're going to be making fingerprints all around where our earth will go later. And we're going to use our blue and green. Um, if you want to use yellow, that could work because yellow and blue make green and you can make a different sort of light green or something like that. <clears throat> so go ahead and get your markers and you're going to color your fingertip with your marker and you're going to press your fingertip down on your paper. Doesn't that look cool? And you're going to go all the way around that planet shape. I'm going to vary the colors, so it doesn't matter if it's perfectly round, it can be a funny shape like that. Could be a double print. I think I'll go in and I'll put some yellow on top. My yellow is getting a little contaminated. I'll figure I'll fix that later. Go ahead and don't be shy if you need to turn your paper around so that you can get the prints onto all the edges. You can do different fingers if you want to. Now I'm going to switch to some blue. A big one. Oh, I like that blue green. That is a really pretty. I think I'll do a sideways one. Put the sideways ones. Boop. Boop. See what that looks like. good. I think I've got enough fingerprints on there for now. I'll wipe my finger off a little bit. And that's it for this piece. So we're going to go back to our watercolor that's still wet. And we're going to finish that by creating a um, outer space. So earth just lays in space, right? It's all dark around it and things like that. So we're going to do a little crayon resist to create our outer space. That's what our white crayon is for. So while this is drying, you can still be working on this. And um, I'm going to create a little white line around my planet so it sort of glows a little bit. So I'm going to do that by pressing really hard around my earth. Really, this is where you have to press hard, and it's a little tricky because it's white on white. But just trust yourself, and if you're pressing really hard and coloring back and forth, it should work. And if you pick up a little color, like I just did, that's okay too. I got my glow and now I'm going to add some little stars and I like to just take my crayon and just do this. Press down really hard, just twist it back and forth a couple times and that should put a nice little dot of white onto your picture and it should be dark enough that way too. I learned something <clears throat> about this celestial phenomenon that's going to happen on May 16th. So uh, May 16th, 2020, there's going to be an alignment of Venus and Mars, I think. It might be Saturn. I should have checked. Um, and then the moon are going to align to create a smiley face. So check that out. 
it might be something you want to check out um, and watch in the sky. I've never seen that before. Okay, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to make me a little smile with the sickle moon. And I'm going to make the eyes. Is there, is there an eye there? I'll pretend that one is Mars and I'll pretend this one is Venus. Okay, so now we're going to color with our black. And you can include other colors too. Um, sometimes when we think about the galaxy, we see pictures of the galaxy, there might be other colors in it. And if you want to, you can do that and mix those together. And for this, we don't really have to be too careful about coloring in. I'm actually applying my black pretty lightly and I'm not worrying about going over the crayon because when I add my water that will reveal the crayon pretty well so I'm just sort of sketching using the side of my marker just sketching around it. 